Domestic for Crimson. Uh, you're matching up against a Kansas team that has been struggling recently with injuries. Kevin McCuller is out for the tournament. Hunter Dickinson is playing through a shoulder issue. Furthermore, the team Kansas played yesterday in Samford pressed the whole time and really tuckers out opponents while you guys comfortably beat McNeese and were able to give the starters some rest. Is that something you're considering when scouting this team, that advantage, or are you just more focused on the X's and O's in the matchups? Yeah, no, not focusing on that at all. I mean, Hunter Dickinson looked great last night to me. Made great plays, uh, shot a hook with his uh, bad arm, bad, uh, made three-quarter court passes like Kevin Love. So uh, I thought he looked great. And, uh, uh, you know, Sanford's a tough, tough uh, team to play, and, and I know they had to uh, get through that, but uh, we're expecting a great battle from Kansas. Back right left corner, please. Coach, Brian Peterson with AZ Desert Swarm. Uh, with the connections that there are between your program and Arizona and playing in the same venue, though on the other side of the bracket, do you see any possibility of your fans rooting for Arizona in the first game and then their, their fans sticking around rooting for your team? And is there any benefit to that? I mean, I, I, I can't speak for their fans. I can speak, I mean, our fans are huge Tommy Lloyd fans and, and uh, uh, you know, so I totally 100% see them uh, uh, supporting the Cats. Uh, and, you know, from a personal standpoint, you know, we'll be pulling hard and rooting hard for them. Heck, uh, Mimi's been staying in our room here the whole, that's Tommy's youngest daughter the last four nights. So <laughs> the wives have been running around, going out to dinner, uh, you know, and breakfast and all, uh, you know, the last four days. So. Yeah, it's kind of standard procedure. Front right. Uh, Coach, uh, Eddie Pelz from AP, you'd obviously mentioned this. It took a little while to get gelling this year. Was there a you know, game or a, a practice or a week where you kind of saw the light go on for you guys? Uh, well, um, I, I think it was more a gradual process through kind of late January and February where it started kind of um, happen, you know, we just started playing much, much better together more. And, that, and the guys have always had great chemistry and really liked each other. It's been a very enjoyable team along those lines. But I think it was just kind of figuring each other out, you know, whether it was Graham and uh, Ryan getting used to playing together more and more in the pick and roll, really understanding each other, um, you know, Anton being able to, to again, Figuring out he needs to assert himself more than he ever had to, you know, when we had Drew and and uh, Julian and guys like that. Uh, and then also, obviously, in certain, you know, putting Ben in that starting lineup, playing the three bigs together, we it took us a while to kind of adjust to that. And once we did, we just kind of ran with it. Okay, back right corner. Yeah, yeah Coach uh, Chuck Culpepper from the Washington Post. Some of your players in Las Vegas after the final were talking about seeing value and being slighted. That it would help them, and athletes have a long history of, you know, scouring the earth for slights to right. try to gain fuel. Yeah. Where do you stand after all you've seen on how much value that does have, and did it have anything to do with what you said first off the bat last night about them being so dialed in? I, I think, I, yeah, I'm with you on the, you know, bulletin board crap and all that stuff. But uh, um, I think what it did do, I think it did provide you know, a healthy dose of respect for McNeese right from the jump, you know, when the, when basically the pairing was announced, you know, I mean, everybody started picking them. So I think, you know, whether that was being slighted or just being like, okay, whoa, we better, it's, it's on right now. And so I think as the week went on, as we showed them film, as they heard from me and the staff for, you know, just how good we thought McNeese was and, and what they were capable of doing. I think there there was definitely a healthy, it's always good to have a, health, a, a little bit of healthy fear and uh, obviously respect for, uh, you know, what you're dealing with. Third row right. Cole Forsman, Sports Illustrated Fan Nation Network. Coach, you've talked a little bit about uh, relationship with Bill Self. Uh, I think it was earlier this year after the St. Mary's game, but how far back does that relationship go and um, what does that sort of mean to you? And it's only your second time playing him, but yeah. Well, I mean, it goes back to 
December 27th, 1962, were born on the same exact day. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, that, that's kind of odd, uh, kind of crazy. Um, but no, just, uh, no, we, we played uh, Bill all the way back when I was first getting going, maybe my second or third year uh, at Illinois. Um, incredibly good. We actually played him when he was at Tulsa way back when in, in, in the Fairbanks tournament. Uh, that was where I first met him, got to know him, and just huge fan, tremendous amount of respect, just what he's been able to do and just, you know, a pressure cooker of a job, but just, you know, what the, the run of Big 12 championships, the uh, success, the streak they have and getting to the NCAA tournament, you know, I think it's them and us and Michigan State. Uh, and then I really like just watching his team play and, you know, we'll – Put in little actions that I saw them run, you know, over the years and all that. So, uh, big time fan and and just uh, awesome, awesome guy and uh, awesome coach. Front left, second row. Austin Getz, KHQ TV in Spokane. Coach, back in 1998, you guys went and played in Lawrence. Uh, at the time, you were an assistant, and Gonzaga was the program nobody had heard of, and Kansas was the blue blood almost 30 years later. Now when people talk about college basketball powerhouses, both these schools come up. What does that mean to you that the work that you've done over the years and your staff have done over the years have kind of elevated you to that level? I mean, it's, it's, it's great. It's, uh, it's great. To, uh, obviously, it's been a long, hard slog for us and but a fun one at that and uh you know we've been able to to stay in growth mode and and uh um you know i think kansas can uh, can probably tell explain it to anybody who's ever worked there or played there or coached there you know it's hard to stay really 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 good for an extended period of time it's really hard when everybody circles the game on the calendar and you're everybody's super bowl and they deal with the same stuff we deal with. It's always a storm the court moment if you lose on the road, and and uh, uh, and and you you know you carry with you high expectations, which is great. But you know, if not handled wisely or correctly, they can be a burden. Back left corner. David Lawrence with Kansas Radio. Coach, can you talk about uh, this year's Kansas team? Do you see it uh, similar similarities, differences between past Bill Self teams? And do you, do you see a similar edge that both you and Kansas are playing with this season? Uh, I mean, I see a total uh, uh, Bill Self type team and that they love to play high low. They love to feed the post. They have great posts and obviously, and KJ Adams is, is, is just a, he's much like Anton Watson for us. He just does everything. Uh, and so I totally, totally see, I mean, he's kind of back to, what I always envisioned, you know, Jayhawk basketball being like. Uh, and that's what, to me, sh shows and is such a great example of why he's such a great coach. Uh, I mean, years past, they were running dribble drive and, and small guys, and he was playing small ball. And, and I mean, the success didn't, didn't slow down at all. So, but to me, I mean, it looks to me like they're back you know, very comfortable in, in running the high-low game and playing out of the post, just just much like we've always done over the years at, at, at Gonzaga for the most part. Okay, second row. Coach, you've been coaching for a long time. You haven't missed the NCAA tournament as a head coach, except for the COVID year. Uh, you've been coaching actually since before I was born, which is crazy. Uh, I don't what think do you, we need to grow, go there. Yeah, well, <laughs> what do you see uh, in this team this year that reminds you of Gonzaga team's past? Uh, the heart uh, that we play with, we, I think we we're back to playing with a, a decent amount of, of swag and, and uh, uh, you know, we're, we figured out we've been knock on wood, taking great care of the ball, sharing it really, really, really well and, and seem to play uh, uh, really, really together. So, I mean, that's my hope that all, all our teams look like that and, and this team has certainly been able to, to do that. They, I think they've done it. I mean, they'll always – be special to me for just how they've hung in there, you know. We had just, you know, probably not rough road or rough patches for most programs, but what I was alluding to earlier with Kansas, I mean, you lose a game, it's, you know, the sky is falling. So uh, um, and we lost more than one. So, you know, they had, they, had to, they had to power through that. They walked into the burden of 
playing at Gonzaga, you know, and some of them weren't used to that or didn't know what it was all about, but they had to figure it out on the on the fly. Back right corner again. Yeah, I know you might like to be uh, 33 and 0 in a one seed, but is there any? Have you, you personally, have you felt anything fun or refreshing about not hauling around that one the way you've done so many times before? Yeah, no, totally, totally. We've hauled it around. We had a nice run of hauling it around and dealing with it. And that 116 game is not fun in any way, shape, or form. And, and uh, but yeah, this has been a nice change, to be honest, with from my standpoint, you just kind of fly under the radar and just kind of do your thing. And then it certainly probably fits my personality better. But, uh, um, you know, hey, it'd be also nice to have five pros on your team and, and uh, you know, steamrolling everybody too. Those are some pretty good days also. So either way is good. As long as you're in here and still playing and, and uh, you know, being able to do stuff like this. Okay, back left corner, please. Uh, Theo Lawson with the Spokesman Review, kind of a two-part question. Um, do you know which of you was born earlier that day on December 27th, 62? Theo, I don't know. How why, how can you even think of stuff like that? I have no idea. Just curious. Um, the second yeah. part, uh, you guys used that lineup uh, yesterday with uh, all three freshmen on the floor at the same time with uh, Dusty, Braden, and Luca in the first half. Um, what's the, the confidence level you have in those three guys? And normally, you kind of tend to shrink your rotations this time of year. and to be able to kind of expand it with those three, um, what have they shown you? Yeah, no, I thought I think uh, uh, you know ideally I would probably wish we could have got to that more this year, but it's just we've been in a lot of tight games, a lot of tough games, and just you know trust those two starting guards is mostly the the issue. But yeah, Luca came in and gave us some nice minutes. We were able to rest uh, uh, some guys, and and uh, I thought Dusty was great uh, yesterday, kind of. Back how he was a little bit earlier in the season, and and uh, was aggressive and making plays, and and um, just just was terrific. And hopefully we'll get that same dusty uh, tomorrow. Okay, we will check our Zoom participants to see if anyone on the Zoom uh, room would like to ask a question for Coach Few. If you do, please use the raise hand button, and we'll come right to you. All right. Seeing not getting on, a whole lot of action on the Zoom I here know. this week Hit in Salt mess. Lake. <laughs> right. Do we have any other questions here for Coach here in the room? Back right corner. What time were you born? <laughs> I have no idea, guys, and I'm regretting I even brought up that <laughs> piece of trivia quite actually. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> huh? Yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't even remember what I did last week. So, yeah. But, hey. I think it was my wife that picked up on that sometime looking at a pre a magazine or something. I don't know. So, I, we try to text each other on our birthdays when, when either one of us remember it. That's about it. <laughs> All right, with that, we'll let Coach go. Coach, uh, good luck tomorrow, yep. and uh, thank yep. you.